anything that's not correct will cause the policy to be null and void um, and, and will result in your claim not being paid. Yeah. In fact, a case that was transferred, that came to myself, which was uh, with a different uh, broker, where the property was worth 2.2 million um, and it was insured for 800,000. Right. And there was a fire mm -hmm. and the insurer did decline. And the information they're giving us, I'm thinking, this just, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Abid, thank you so much for joining me on the couch today. I really appreciate that. A man that knows everything there is to know about insurance, or pretty much. We were just speaking earlier on about a landlord situation where a tenant being growing weed in the, uh, in the property completely destroys it when that kind of thing happens. Um, and we expect the insurance to take care of it and at least sort it out and eventually get the property back. But there's about £150,000 of damage and the insurance refused to pay in that situation. Yeah. What is it that creates these situations when you think you're insured, but actually you're not and they won't pay? Well, it's, it's the, the levels of cover. I mean, there's something, there's the property owner's insurance, which is um, the, the property owner's liability. And then you have uh, malicious damage by tenant. And when someone is growing drugs in your premises or using the premises for illegal activities, mm -hmm. then that's normally covered by malicious damage by tenant. Okay. Now, some policies will give you £5,000 cover or £10,000 cover as a standard. Majority won't. Okay. So this particular incident, um, um, the landlord had done all the checks they possibly could. The tenant had a registered limited company. Mm -hmm. um, the minute they moved into the premises, they erected scaffolding outside the premises to show the landlord that they were doing renovation works Okay. whilst they were actually constructing their own underground Factory, uh, sorry. factory inside and it was only when the neighbours started spending something okay. funny after a couple of months that they alerted the authorities um, and, I mean the rent was paid there, 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 there was no issues like that so the, yeah. so the landlord so the landlord didn't they check there was, absolutely there was no they had there. no reason to be alarmed the landlord was insured as well absolutely insured okay. but they just didn't have malicious damage by tenant right. and therefore it was quite a large property extensive claim mm -hmm. I mean just, just, just the energy companies just their costs can be overwhelming because mm -hmm. Their first port of call when the police arrive is to disconnect the power. Yeah, it was rather they, they bypass the meter. It was a completely sophisticated operation. One of the one of the better ones I've seen, and, and we do see a lot of these. We see some botch up jobs, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was it was rather sophisticated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's 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 I mean, the kind of stuff we see on a yes. day to day is is just incredible. It blows your mind. So when you're when you're thinking about insurance uh, on your property, often it's one of those things you don't get up each morning and get excited about. Okay, property insured today is one of those days. It's really exciting. You think, okay, this is a task I need to get done. Yeah. And when we're speaking to the insurance or when we're speaking to the broker and we say, okay, this is what I need sorting out. You know, this is the property. This is the value. Has it got a flat roof? That's the only question that kind of comes to mind. Has it got a flat roof on that one? Yeah. Uh, and and they're the kind of things we think about. But there's probably so many things we don't think about. And what I um. Uh, let's say uh, what causes me to drop it down in my priority list when I get a form that's 17 pages long and say yeah, fill out all these yeah, yeah, quick yeah. questions yeah I get that I get that but the thing is it's your asset mm. okay um, and you need to give it the respect it deserves you're very right people are very um, uh, vague when it comes to insurance they kind of getting information out of people can be really hard and many times I've had people saying there's no flat roof what does that mean what's that going to do with it so we do as a brokerage as a practice we do Utilize Google and and you know it's it's really advanced now. Uh, you can see the the construction if there's any panels, um, if there's any flat roof, mm -hmm. what percentage of the roof is flat, what kind of constructions on the flat roof, uh, and these things are very key because in the event of a claim, anything that's not correct will cause the policy to be null and void, um, and and will result in your claim not being paid. Yeah. Um, you have under insurance, you have over insurance. I I, I done a video last week about. Um, you know, over insurance where a terrorist house in inner Birmingham, mm -hmm. um, they thought the house was worth a million pound. So this is like rebuild value. Or... Yeah, and this is and, and and despite me explaining yeah. the difference between a rebuild value and the sale value, mm. they were still adamant that it's a million pound. Mm. And in that case, scenario, yeah, glow gold floorboards in that. This one is or... it. This is it. And and I don't TikTok video about this because. You know, over insurance and under insurance are as bad as each other. Okay, and they can. But the under insurance we hear about that you the value you've declared for something is a lot less than what you actually. Is. Absolutely, um, over insurance works in the same way, mm -hmm. in, in the same way. So if you over insure something and they determine that the value is less, they will underpay you 
the percentage that you're overinsured by. Mm-hmm. So it can be a bit of a, um, a mine. So, you know, you, you, you need to be realistic. Yes. I mean, the cost of building materials has gone up recently. So we have that, uh, you know, uh, um, um, when we're quoting, we index link everything mm-hmm. anyway. So it gives you an automatic inflation. But you've got to be reasonable. Yeah. You know, it's better being open and transparent with absolutely. your broker. We had a case, uh, in fact, a case that was trans- uh, that came to myself, which was uh, with a different uh, broker where the property was worth 2.2 million um, and it was insured for 800,000. Right. And there was a fire mm-hmm. and the insurer did decline. Um, and oh, in, the, that, in that example, just so I understand, it's not that they'll only pay 800,000. No, no, no. And no, they no. won't pay at all. No, no, no. So if you take away, if, if you get 220,000 and 800,000, mm-hmm. the percentage that is underinsured by that's the amount they will take away from your eight hundred thousand pound. Wow. Yes. This is the part people don't appreciate. People think, okay, I'll get eight hundred K. You won't get eight hundred K. Even less than that. You will get substantially less than that. If you're underinsured by fifty percent, mm-hmm. you will get eight hundred K less fifty percent. Wow. And if you're overinsured mm-hmm. by fifty percent, you will get eight hundred K less fifty percent. Mm. And that's the part people fail to understand. Yeah. So I know that, you know, people sometimes say, Oh, I'm not an expert. You should get your house surveyed regularly or your your premises. Yeah. As uh, I said, you start with, it's your asset at the end of the It's day. your asset. You know, it's, it's, it's your... I mean, it's a business. It's your pension. It's your future. It's, you know, it's something that you worked hard to build. Yeah. Uh, it's your children's inheritance. Um, and and I, I just feel that sometimes people don't take it as serious as they, as they should. Mm-hmm. Sometimes insurance is just a feel-good factor. I'm insured, mm-hmm. but they're not insured. Um, and, and I think the reality hits home when... The claim happens. So what we mean by that is you got insurance cover. Yeah. But because either we haven't been completely honest with the insurer, we've been deliberately forgetful yeah. about what we No, it can them. be I mean, it's sometimes it's deliberate, sometimes it's genuinely people are unaware. People are unaware. But by not taking the effort to providing the correct information, Absolutely. you might have a piece of paper that says here's your insurance certificate. Yeah. But if you ever, God forbid, have a claim, yeah. You know they're gonna it's like find you, a reason not to pay. So you you wouldn't buy a house w- without doing the searches. Mm. You wouldn't buy a house without yeah. doing the, the relevant searches yeah. and the relevant checks. Yeah. The same way you shouldn't get insured without doing the relevant checks mm. and making sure the information you're providing to the insurer is correct. Mm. And and we say it time and time again, any changes in material facts mm. will result in your policy being nil and void. Mm. And and no broker can emphasize that enough. Yeah, I think everybody has the same. You know, it's our catchphrase. Uh, is so important. It's, uh, we have had cases where, you know, at the start of the of the policy, your tenants were students. Yeah. Midway through, you've changed your tenancy type, and gone HMO. Yes. Forgot to tell us. Mm. Claims happened. Yeah. What happened in that scenario? Because mm. you are insured for a certain product. Yeah. And the risk is different with completely different, different, different type. Um and. It now transpires that you've got completely different tenants in there. Mm-hmm. You know, and you've got to tell us, and despite yeah. the fact that on every single paperwork we send you, we keep on telling you that please keep us informed of any material changes. And we yeah. say it time and time. So it's not one of those things we should be thinking about once a year. All the time. Yeah. It's it's being mindful that actually if we've done something to the property that could affect the risk that we need. To Even, you know, extensions, construction work, anything like that, the insurers need to know because... Mm-hmm. Your construction work may result in damage to your neighbour. Mm. You know, you could be you, uh, you could be adding value onto the property by yeah. obviously uh, adding an extension. The insurer needs to be aware if there's structural work being uh, uh, be, uh, being done at your property. Mm. Insurer needs to know because that then attracts a different kind of risk, a yeah. different kind of exposure. Yeah. Um. So, you know, we should be part of the checklist. Mm. You know, talk to the insurers as, as important as talking to your legal team is as important it is talking to your insurer. So when it comes to a, a, a kind of a general policy, if there is such a thing, like when uh, as a landlord, uh, an investor, someone that has a property, maybe they have for a short period of time, they're going to flip it on, maybe they've got it long term in their portfolio. When they're shopping around to get the insurance in place, is it, you know, all the insurances are pretty much similar or is yeah, there I mean, things we need to be thinking the about? The key thing is your 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 um, property owner's liability. 
mm -hmm. your repo value. And your property owner's liability, what's that action? That's two million. So anybody that comes onto your premises, they get injured, they're mm -hmm. covered. If if a brick falls off your house and knocks somebody out. So that covers the building? Yes. And it people, covers your liabilities it. as a property owner. Yeah. So if anybody comes onto your land, mm -hmm. onto your premises, uh, it keeps you covered. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have your repo value. Mm -hmm. Then you have your rental income. Um, uh, but let's just cover them off individually. So the rebuild value is, God forbid, there's a situation where that property needs to be rebuilt. Yeah, it's uh, covering you up to a certain amount. Up of to a certain amount of time. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Cover that. Oh, and because you've got a hundred thousand pound house, it doesn't mean it will cost a hundred thousand. No, no. no. So, so that hundred thousand pound house more. in a certain postcode may be worth a hundred thousand. If you were to pick up that house mm -hmm. the way it were and move it to a more affluent postcode, it could be worth a million pound. Yeah. So the sale value has no relevance. Yeah. It is actually the, building of the bricks and mortar. But you have to incorporate as well the cost of demolition yeah. and debris removal Leaving, as well. Rebuilding. Because if there were to be a fire, then there's a cost associated to demolition, yeah. to the debris removal. Um, so all these things have to be incorporated in. So real, you know, you've know, you got to be as realistic. Yeah. You may have bought the house for 100K or you may have bought the house for a million pound. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's going to cost you that much to rebuild that property yeah. again. And then you mentioned rental insurance. So this is to protect your income. What type of a So you get loss of rent, which is normally on a commercial 20% of the repo value. Mm -hmm. um, and that covers you in the event of a fire or a flood where you have to move your tenants out and they're not paying you rent because they're not using your premises or your facility. Then the insurer will make up that rent 12 months, 24 months, 36 mm -hmm. months. Rent guarantee is a different product. That's yeah. for your residentials. But on the commercial side, it's uh, it's loss of rent, meaning okay. the tenant isn't paying you rent because the the premises is inhabitable or or, yeah. or or it's not usable. And so, the explain the difference on rent guarantee for us. Then. Rent guarantee is a commercial, uh, sorry, a residential where you've yeah. got professional working tenants, but for that to be effective, you need to have you need to have done reference checks. You need to have a deposit. You have to go through that whole process as well. And this is another thing. I mean, people seem to think that this is a, a, a fix all, um, you know, easy fix. It's not easy fix because for that policy to actually take effect, you as a landlord have to have done certain things yeah. um, or your agent must must have done certain things. So credit checks, reference mm -hmm. checks, employment checks, uh, securing a deposit. And only if, and only if these things are all in place, will that policy actually kick in and be effective. Yeah, if we take a step back from that and try and understand what that means, um, so if we've thoroughly vetted a tenant before we've moved them into a property, meaning we're quite comfortable and confident, they seem like a good tenant, they've got good the credit worthiness, they can afford the rent, uh, and all things seem uh, uh, suitable for us to move them in as a tenant. And as long as we've done all those checks, and if there's a situation where they can't pay, they don't pay, um, uh, then you've got some insurance to protect against Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. But if you move in the first place that comes along and gives you a bit of cash for six months rent in advance and you don't do any checks, you can't. Which you're not fortunately, we are that. seeing more and more because there was a time previously where people were desperate for tenants. Mm. Um, it's changed now with the yeah. whole HMO situation, but I mean, there was a period where people were just desperate for, mm. for, for and they were taking anybody on, which inevitably then in month three, month four, month five results in problems. Mm. Um, and then by taking these policies that people thought, yeah, we are, you know, oh, we, are we are sorted, yeah. but it's yeah. far from it. It's, it's merely a piece of paper yeah. without the TNCs. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't adhered to the TNCs, it's not valid. It's like we were talking about earlier off camera that these kind of insurance policy, yes, you've got that certificate, but they're, they're worthless pieces of paper. Yeah. They're not going to cover you for anything. You can give them years you in this job. You're not getting anything back. 22 years of, uh, in this in this industry, and mm -hmm. I can honestly say I've seen the worst of the worst. Mm. When you are engaging with, with clients, sometimes... It's just a feel-good factor for them. Mm. And the information they're giving us, I'm thinking, this mm. just, you know, it just doesn't make sense. And then you read it back to them. Yeah. And you, and obviously we go through, you know, compliance, all the calls are recorded. Um, and, 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 and sometimes, if you're, you know, if you're under-insuring, it's not point insuring. Yeah. Because in the time when you need the policy to, 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 to take effect, mm -hmm. it's not going to. You have to think about what is it you're taking that policy out for. If it's peace of mind, which generally what insurance is, yeah. then you haven't got it's, any peace of mind. There's an attitude, oh, I'll get it covered and I'll deal with it if it happens. Mm -hmm. What I say to people is not if it happens, it's when it happens. Mm -hmm. Because from my side of the desk, 
Because you, you you'll see claims, you see what happened. Time, yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, the, the, the kind of diver, the, the complexity of claims and the kind of claims we get in is, is things that you could never imagine, mm-hmm. never believe, but things happen. Will people, you know, things happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen loss of life, we've seen um, uh, loss of limb, I've seen life changing injuries, um, I've seen people losing their whole, you know, life savings, mm-hmm. uh, losing their livelihoods. Um, you know, it's not a nice thing to happen. Yeah. And that's what you get in short for to protect yeah. you against the inevitable. Yeah. Um, so if you are going to spend a thousand pounds, why not spend twelve hundred pounds and get it short properly? properly. Yeah. Um, otherwise, don't do it. Yes. There's no point. In terms of the other th- components, if you like, then so you've got your general property insurance, you've got uh, so rental cover. Um, what other things should be considered within setting up a policy? Uh, do you think? Well, for properties, there's there's your property owner's liability, there's your the, the, there's your rebuild value, there's your uh, rental income, and then malicious damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that's the, the damage liquid, done by yeah, the the, te- the occupier, by tenant, which 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 does happen, okay. Um, and 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 then your your legal expenses, content, uh, which is well, I mean, depends as a landlord, are you putting contents into the uh, so like for example, into if the HMO building. then or service accommodation? Yeah, you are, are you putting? Content. But the whole HMO thing as well. You see this 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 whole rent to rent scenario, and and I've said many times before, insurance yeah. now is getting more and more complex. Gone are the days where it was uh, a standard let. Now you are giving your property to somebody else, who's taking it off you for a period of time, three years, five years. Um, you as a landlord have no control over that tenant. You don't know who yeah. it is. You don't know their background. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know where they've been. What you know? What they what their what their history is. That's a rent to rent insurance. That's completely different. Um, and and sometimes getting this across over to tenants uh, to landlords is hard as well because this, these policies are slightly more because they're social housing policies. You're housing vulnerable people. You're housing people who are unemployed and on benefits. You're housing people who are unemployed maybe not in the best state of mind um you're hiring asylum seekers um so the risk is higher is a some greater risk wrong. yes uh, yeah the vandalism the risk, risk is greater the damage risk is greater yeah. so insurers look at this from a from a from a different angle but landlords sometimes struggle to understand that concept and also we as we're touching on rent to rent rent to rent is really dependent on what type of contract you have what's your legal arrangement yeah. in that overall uh situation so for example it could be a straightforward commercial lease, yes. which then you can issue tenancies underneath. Or it could be, which often some people do, is sign a management agreement, thinking they've yeah, got... but the money that the landlord... But the, letter, the landlord is still part of that process. Yes. If they're part of the process, then it's different. But if they're not part of the process, which is in most case scenarios that, that, that we've dealt with... Or they're unaware that they're part but, of the process. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, and as brokers, you know, I do probe. I do probe, and it's not because I'm being nosy, yeah. because we need to know. Sometimes people get offended. You, you want to understand that yeah. it's being insured correctly. People get offended and think, why are you asking me that for? Mm. Right, but we need to know because we need to convey that message to the underwriters, mm. make sure they are aware of the situation so that if the inevitable happens, we have a paper trail of everything yeah. and everybody that needs to know whatever they need to know have been informed and no one can actually raise an issue. Mm. In my 22 years... Um, hand on heart, none of my claims have been distributed. That's good. Um, we've had challenges, mm-hmm. we've had challenges, and I've had claims of all nature. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, none of my claims have been dis- distributed, and that's simply because we are thorough. Mm-hmm. We have to be. And I think uh, so. I spent seven years as a fraud officer working on the other side of the desk. Yes. So this is when you're investigating claims. You are yeah. a broker. So insurance. back in the back, back in the cash for crash days, mm-hmm. um, I was involved cash in cash for crash. Cash for crash. Just elaborate a little. Yeah. Bit so those, so sure what you, mean. you know the whole RTA incidents, the whole road traffic incidents when yeah. the personal injury industry was booming and the hire car industry was were, was absolutely soaring. Um, you know there was a period I think we were paying two three hundred pound for our insurance then, mm. and since then they've gone to you know what. But so I so in, in that period I was I was recruited. Uh, by the insurers, and I, I and I worked as a as a as a fraud officer, um, covering indemnity, covering mm-hmm. liability. Um, I covered RTA. I covered accidents at work. I covered um, um, you know people taking time off work mm-hmm. and 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 taking sick pay. Um, investigated them, and it was really int- interesting. So you're investigating the claim on behalf of the insurers. Okay. okay. So they're telling me a file saying, Mr. Sadhu saying, claims is at an incident. Can you go and check on it, please? Yes. And my role was to 
to to to to conduct yourself, take a indemnity statement, a liability statement, and then verify your story. Meaning, going to the garages, going to the hire companies, yeah. and doing the full full thing, preparing the report mm -hmm. and sending it back to the insurers. Mm -hmm. Effectively, deciding whether you you Getting you were well. entitled to get paid or not. So, kind of, but we have they, an understanding. Would they do that. Sorry to to drop. Would they do that on like? Most cases, as a percentage of cases, or ones that they thought, well, this looks a bit odd. Before technology, mm -hmm. before the phones could determine whether the caller was telling, Recognize the voices and telling fibs or not, <laughs> before that, every case was being investigated. Okay. We were inundated. And 2014, mm -hmm. when technology started kicking in, um, things started changing a bit because they can, and they do insist mm -hmm. that the policyholders speak to them on the phone. Right. Okay. They They are very insistent on that. Um, and they can make out from the way you are speaking mm -hmm. whether you are not entirely okay. being truthful. Yeah. And that's what now triggers an investigation. Okay. Otherwise, it was just one of the mill. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was being investigated. Um, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a brilliant time because we, I was involved with the police and in some undercover mm -hmm. operations. Um, the gangs were huge at the time, you know, the, particularly the RTA world, you know, the, the, yes, the, 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 the road traffic collisions. Yeah. And they were all true. All the stories we heard and more because mm -hmm. there was contrived incidents there was deliberate incidents there was there was there was there was all kinds of stuff and yeah. we were in the thick of it and that gave me some really good experience and, mm -hmm. and 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 insight into the whole insurance world and the kind of things that trigger off investigations and the kind of things that will result in them declining your payment or, or deeming your policy nil and void and i think it, it just comes back to the fact that insurance needs the respect yeah. it deserves when you are spending money to get your asset or your business or your car or, or your home insured, be as truthful as possible and over-deliver over on giving the information. Yes. Let us figure out what's relevant. Yes. Right? You don't be the judge of that. You, you, know, you want to hold us accountable when there's a problem. And when there is a problem, it's a case of, what you're able to do is because it's insured correctly to make sure it's it's kind of paid out. I guess you don't want to be in a position where you've you haven't been completely open with the insurer. You've been insured, then a claim uh, occurs, and then you're trying to fudge things to try and make that claim absolutely. Work and because and they'll work it out. They will work it out, and you ain't and getting paid. There's a notion that you know insurance companies never pay. Well, I disagree with that. Insurance companies do pay. When you lift the covers and 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 dig deeper, you always find there's. The problem is at the point of inception. Mm. It could be from the broker, or it could be from the insured. Yeah, yeah. Insurance company in the insurance company will go on the information provided mm -hmm. by the broker, which is given to them by the insured. Mm. So when you lift the covers, it's not the insurance companies. Uh, I, 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 you know, we always get this. Uh, oh, the insurance companies—they just take money; they don't pay back. They do they're mathematical calculation from their side because yeah. they're assessing a risk Absolutely. and putting a fee to it. Yeah, and, and then I, we're going to have to pay this percentage. This percentage we won't pay, and they'll spare our profit. Like I mean, RTAs like road traffic accidents. Like people seem to think that if they get out on this, uh, if if they've if if they've had a collision on the roadside, mm -hmm. and they get out and they admit fault, that that's the end of the matter. Well, it's mm -hmm. not because you are no professional person to admit to your fault. Yeah, the insurance company will do their own in-house assessment mm -hmm. based on the information that you provide them and the information that they get from the third party mm -hmm. driver. And they will conduct their own in-house assessment based on professional opinions mm -hmm. by people who are accredited yeah. within that particular sector. And then they will decide whether you were at fault or not. You may be screaming from the top of the mountains that it, was, that mm -hmm. it wasn't my fault, but under the road traffic laws, it may be your fault. And then they will also make an assessment that it's a 50-50. If we go to court, we're gonna incur mm -hmm. X amount of costs, charges, and ultimately, it's going to result in a 50-50. Is this worth pursuing further? Okay. Is this worth going any further? Because at the end of the day, it's not you that's paying. Yeah, They are paying on your behalf. Yeah. It's the insurer that's paying. So they have full right mm -hmm. to to dispute. And, and mm -hmm. they will ask you for your version of events. And they will ask you for your witnesses. And they will ask you for all of that stuff. But ultimately, it's their decision. And it's for them to make. Yeah. So sometimes when... Uh, uh, let's say as a property owner, you have a, a small incident and then you think, oh, actually it's not worth even claiming uh, on the insurance. We'll just pay for it ourselves because it's going to affect the policy massively. We're going to be, they're only going to overcharge us next year. Is there any truth, do you think, behind? Uh, well, obviously a claim, a claim, a claim does make an impact on your, mm. 
on your premium and, and you have to make an assessment all the time that don't forget you have an access to pay as well. Mm -hmm. So with the access and, you know, is, it, is, the, is the claim really worth claiming? Mm -hmm. And what we find with the big property owners, you know, the large portfolios, they tend not to make claims for, for minor stuff. Only if there's something huge, yeah. um, you know, will they actually um, trigger the um, insurance. Otherwise, they kind of deal with themselves. But you have to take, a, you know, um, um, a view that I've got to pay an access. It will result mm -hmm. in an additional premium next year. Um, and not only for the next year, for the next three years, possibly. Right. Even the five, you know, even five years. So you, 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 you've, you've got to take all that into consideration. And then the cause of the claim, what's actually happened? Is it a flat roof? Mm -hmm. Have you adhered to the flat roof condition? Um, you know, flat roofs, uh, particularly fault on timber, in the in the summer months they 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 expand. Yeah, yeah. In the winter months they shrink. You know, regular uh, shrinkage it causes cracks, which then results in leaking. You do have a condition on your policies for flat roofs to be maintaining them. Um, and when the dust has just come out, they can tell that the roof hasn't been maintained. No, it's been on touch for last years. That. It's been on touch for years. Yeah. And, and and also as well, Google now is is, is so advanced. Yeah. You know, you can get up-to-date pictures of the roof and, and they can determine, mm. they can determine when this roof was laid mm -hmm. and has it been maintained. Mm. You, it's, it's all there. Yes. You know, so you, you've got to take it seriously. I'm, I'm not saying people do it deliberately, but you've got to take it seriously. And, and, and that's I think the, the flat roof is, I guess, that the higher risk is because it's the the chances of a water leak is going to be higher. It happens and a lot of claims. I'm guessing are probably so many, so many, so many. And I'm always getting. I mean, there's always a dispute between the landlord and the and the tenant, whether it be a commercial tenant or or resident. And again, it comes back down to the contract of how they organise yeah. their lease. Uh, ultimately, the landlord's insurer is going to pay, or the tenant's insurer is going to pay. Yeah. Somebody has to pay for it because once the leak starts, it doesn't stop until it's patched. And sometimes when you patch it up, it's that far gone yeah. that is you can't patch it up anymore. You need to get a a, a new roof, yeah. and it's costly. It's very costly. Um, so when your policy documents come, you know people don't read them. No, read your policy documents. The file straight over that. Yeah, the helpful. file. They're not. You know, read it because we're brokers. Mm. Even we can make mistakes. Even we can yeah. make mistakes. Yeah. Something would have got missed, lost in communication. Spelling, even a spelling error in your name could be a problem, mm. right? So check your policy documents. You have a schedule which tells you the sums you're insured for. You have um, a statement of fact which tells you the information that we've been insured on. Mm -hmm. And then you have your policy wording which tells you the do's and the don'ts and the pros mm. and the cons and the, 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 the process for when there's a claim and, and, and how to do things. Um, read them because honestly anybody can make you could have been a mistake on your behalf could be a mistake on our behalf ultimately a mistake is a mistake yes. and ultimately when the when something happens it's going to be you out of pocket yeah if there is a situation of a claim um, is it sensible to go back to the broker that insured you originally or can you go to a different broker like for example could you help somebody with a claim that mm. is to a different broker thing is brokers or, don't get paid for claims we get paid for insuring people. It's really it's customer service. Yeah, what you're doing, service. you're looking after your client. Yeah. So, I mean, on the policy wording, they'll, it will tell you in the event of a claim, bring this number and this, and there's a whole thing there. We do try and, and uh, assist our clients and walk mm. walk through the claim process with them because they panic and uh, and sometimes it can go wrong. Yeah. So, so really, you'll be just looking after Yeah, just supporting them because, you know, as I say, 22 years in the game, mm -hmm. I still have clients who've been with me for 22 years. Mm. They've been with me from day dot, yes. um, and it, it's not. Sometimes it's, you know, if, if the claim's not too big, it's not too hard for us to 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 support. It's just a couple of emails the, uh, uh, here and there, yeah. or pick up the phone and just have a conversation and with. Do the, you understand what the insurer needs in order yeah. to process it? The client, that. when does the claim? The client thinks emotionally, mm. and the emotions come out. Yeah, because it's not a nice experience. Yeah, you know, because yeah. you're you're dealing with. Somebody who's had to deal with a very unfortunate situation, absolutely, whatever it absolutely. might be. Particularly, you know, when, you, when we had the flooding recently, mm -hmm. you know, people losing their businesses, losing their whole stock, everything. And it's very emotional because, it's, you know, they're thinking, oh, my God, I'm completely, my business has just gone under, literally gone underwater because everything's just flooded. Yes, yeah. um, and you can imagine at that time the emotion comes out. So we need to be there to kind of comfort them and say, listen, mm -hmm. okay, we'll deal with it, calm down. It's not as bad as it looks. Mm -hmm. It is bad. But we will get you through. And this is what you're insured for. And this is what our role is to kind of support you in your time of need. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I do enjoy, and because I have the client's background, I kind of enjoy the claims. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we're kind of talking through the process, and sometimes it's just a phone call yeah. uh, to an uh, insurer or, or 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 an email, which kind of uh, just gets it dealt with. Mm. But the 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 look of joy on their face when they've got paid, mm. priceless. Yes, and that's what makes very it different from that very first phone call yeah. that they've just had a problem. Yeah, yeah, and and then that client is yours for life, mm. and that client will also bring you ten other clients. Yeah, because they've been looked after. Mm. You're the man. You sorted them out in the time of need. And that's priceless. Yeah. People people say, oh, you hear this term about, oh, the insurers, you only know how good the insurer is when it comes to making a claim. Absolutely. But some of that's going to be based on what you've given them and what you've told absolutely, them. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? what? For. Yeah, it's not, you know, we're not the normal practice where it's nine to five and that's it, goodbye, God bless. Uh, or, you know, we, our job is to insure you and you're on your own. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there is cases like that, but we're far from that. Yeah. We are, it's about personal service. Yeah. Um, and it's about looking after clients. And again, again, it's not hard. It's not hard. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple phone call, simple email. Uh, sometimes just a conversation. The client needs somebody who understands what they're going through to listen to them. Yes. Um, because only they can appreciate what they've just lost. Mm. If their property's been in a fire or they've had a flood or their business is that you know, some, some, something's happened. Only they can understand what they're going through mm. because that's their business. That's something they've put their heart and soul into mm -hmm. and only somebody from my side of the desk can understand what they're going through so sometimes just talking to them yeah goes a long way mm. because then they feel that they've let it out yeah. and and then they can think a bit clearer yeah. but yeah it's a it's a it's a i love my industry mm. honestly i absolutely love it and uh, i can't say i guess excited as you about it sure, oh, well, but I'm, learning, I'm understanding a bit more i thought i was quite knowledgeable on the subject but I'm no it's, it's learning a few interesting you know the beauty there. of this is such the beauty of this industry is no two risks are the same. Mm. No two days are the same. And uh, you're learning something new yeah. every day. Yeah. And that's what, yeah. you know, gives me the gives me the reason to wake up every day. And you're dealing with lots of different types. Absolutely. Of, uh, you you know, you're learning about businesses, you're dealing with, with different individuals. I'm a, I'm a sucker for routine. I can't do routine. I can't. It's just not in my nature. Like variety. I like the variety. I like I like the different stuff we do. Um at the moment, I mean, if you know, if I gave you a list of stuff that I'm currently personally quoting on at the moment, mm. blows your mind, mm. you know. And there's, they're so far apart from each other. There's no similarity. Very different, yeah. And that's the excitement and mm. the challenge of getting this risk over the line. And the more awkward the risk, the more hard it is to get over the line. Yeah. The more satisfaction you get once you've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love that. Yeah. And just wrapping up on claims, and uh, before we move on from that. Sometimes people will think about a, a loss adjuster to help them with a claim. What's your views on something like that? Is that something your broker should do anyway for your help? Loss adjuster is appointed by your insurer mm -hmm. and the loss assessor is appointed by you. Okay. Loss assessor will demand a fee, mm -hmm. which sometimes if worthwhile paying, mm -hmm. they may charge something upfront mm -hmm. and they will charge something back end once you've been paid a percentage out of branch you've been paid. Now. Some people try and navigate or negotiate a huge claim on their own. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't advise that. Yeah. Um, as much as we love insurance companies, and as much as we work with them, and we yeah. and we, you know, we 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 say good things about them. You have to protect your own interest, and that's why you got insured in yeah. the first place. So I would always recommend getting a competent mm. loss assessor on board, who can speak the same language as the loss adjuster. Yeah. And negotiate. Like, it's like you wouldn't go to court to fight a criminal case on your own. You Try take a solicitor yeah. and you take a barrister. Even if you're innocent or whether you're guilty, you would have somebody in your corner. Mm -hmm. When it comes to a large loss or a large claim, even a small claim, mm -hmm. right, it's always worth having the right professional with you. I'm an insurance broker. Mm -hmm. Although I have that experience, it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't feel comfortable representing or giving you Official advice on how to tackle it. I can, I can, you know, jump in and talk to insurer on behalf, or, or 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 be with you when you talk to the insurer, or kind of guide you through that, or even liaise with the loss adjusters. But I'm certainly in no position to act on your behalf. Yes. A loss assessor will act on your behalf. Will be freelance, um, and they will charge you a fee um, upfront, and they will charge you a fee back end. Mm -hmm. But their fee, uh, whatever fee you paid them. Uh, you pay them will come out of the money that you've received mm -hmm. as a result of their work. Yes. 
So that you you almost if they've done their job well, absolutely. They they've, they've earned co- that. Yes. Yeah. And if you're and, and I guess and it comes out it, of that payment anyway. Yeah. If even if you've got a legitimate claim that's straightforward and you know the insurance is going to pay out and it's but it's a sizable amount. I'm guessing insurance is going to probably try on a little bit and there's maybe not. There's always a problem. There, there, you know, as much as we say, yeah. there's always a problem. There's yeah. always a problem. Um, I'm not saying that anybody manufactures problems or yeah. creates problems, but there is always a problem. Yeah. There's always something somewhere along the line. There's no, there's somewhere where a T has been cro- uh, missed out or a dot has been missed out or something. Mm. So, as I say, you you know, you wouldn't go to Crown Court to mm. tackle a murder charge, even if you're guilty, um, not guilty, mm-hmm. with that barrister in your mm-hmm. corner. In the same way, you shouldn't tackle an insurance claim without having a proper representative yeah. in your corner. Yeah. Um, I, um, and that's what I always say to people. We have a, a network of assessors. You can find your own, but mm-hmm. always don't try and do it solo because... Yeah, so if you had a situation where a client uh, had a sizable claim, you've got a network of people to kind of Absolutely. help Absolutely. them with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One thing that uh, you see sometimes happening and, you know, with within that kind of property circle, sometimes a conversation, let's say someone's trying to insure a property, it's a little bit odd or different or whatever, rather than run the mill three-bedroom family house. And they ring one insurer and they kind of get a quote. Then they they ring another insurer, but they give them slightly different information. And we were talking about this slightly earlier on. What impact could that potentially have? That has a huge impact. But the thing is, the underwriters are the same. The wholesalers are the same. So effectively, um, what we're saying is the information goes back to goes the same back place. To the same. Yeah, yeah. The good old days where it was filing cabinets and you know several people dealing with it and people didn't know what was going on are gone. Now it's all on databases. Mm-hmm. So if you submit information through one broker, it's logged on the system. You then submit the same information through a different broker, it's logged on the same yeah. system. Some insurers will not even quote the same risk from two from, from two different brokers. Mm-hmm. They'll say, well, we've quoted this risk already right. by a, a certain broker. I'm sorry, we can't offer you a premium okay. on it. I've, you know, I've had this. And then when you try and change the figures on it, mm-hmm. that is then highlighted. So what can happen in that situation? The insurer will say, you know what, we're not interested, goodbye. We're not going to it rings you. alarm bells for the insurer. And if you are an adverse risk, if you are a weird risk, and it's a limited market for you, mm-hmm. you're stuck. You're in trouble. Because no one's going to insure you. And without insurance, you can't trade. Yes. Um, it's a huge problem. So, you know, it's a tricky one. And I, and I appreciate people want to shop around. Um, but you could appreciate that the underwriters mm-hmm. and the wholesalers are the same for, for certain risks, particularly... Mm-hmm. It's not a, a a big market for them. Yeah. So whatever information you you do submit, it's all on it on a database, and it comes back around. Yeah. And in terms of um, uh, insurance for something like like service accommodation, short stay, Airbnb model, which is kind of evolving as a newer thing, mushrooming uh, in terms of activity. Um, what kind of things should uh, uh, an operator be thinking about insurance wise? Again, the the Airbnb is is relatively a new concept. Mm-hmm. The 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 HMO concept I came across two thousand sixteen, mm-hmm. the first time I heard about it, and I was I think I was very early in the days where I started talking to insurers. Then they never understood it. Mm-hmm. What's that? How do yeah. you do that? What do you mean? Someone's given somebody that house for three years. Yeah. Are you mad? Right? And we had this conversation on a rent then on, on, on a rent to rent yeah. deal. Um, and I, I, and I, in them days they used to ask for business plans. Mm-hmm. They used to ask you for the whole shabam. Now we were, we were one of the first around in the Midlands, particularly, mm-hmm. who were dealing with rent rents, and, and I think I spoke at your with, a yeah. few of your events about it. Because thankfully, mm-hmm. you know, it's not genius by me, but it was presented to me very early on, and I I picked up the phone to underwriters mm-hmm. and said, "Listen, this is what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. Can you do something?" It's the same for the for the Airbnb market at the moment. There are insurers out there who understand it, who do it, who who appreciate it, but there's still a bit of work to be done. And I think the more and more they put them on and mm-hmm. And um, because insurance is now very complicated. Yes. You know, the good old days where you had students or asylum seekers or unemployed or, Tenant or employed, degrees professional, much it, was a, it was a different world. Now it's so complex and there's so much information that we need to understand and relay back to the insurer. And even with the Airbnbs, there's sometimes there's three people in the in the whole process. You've got the landlord, then you've got an agent, then you've got another agent, then you've got the 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 person who's running the 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 Airbnb. Where does the liability stand? Mm-hmm. Who is ultimately responsible? Yes. And if you're suing one, then who does he sue? And it gets all complex. Yes. So again, it goes back to our previous point where you need to be, um, you need to give us more information than we, than we even require or need to be able to get your proper mm-hmm. quotation. 
But what I will stress is, 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 you know, be open. Yeah. And give the insurance element of your business the respect it deserves because it's, although it's a cost, and I, I know, you know, people don't like the cost. Ultimately, it will be that one mechanism that saves your life. Yeah. Well, you know, so, so your business saves life, your business, yeah. saves your, Somebody saves else everything. Life. And honestly, I've mm-hmm. seen stories, I've seen, uh, I remember distinctively many, many years ago where a claim went wrong for somebody. Mm-hmm. And uh, the day the bailiffs came into his house, Mm -hmm. he was on the phone to me and I'll never forget the way he was screaming on the Mm -hmm. phone to me. He haunts me even now. Um, He stayed with me in that house. Mm -hmm. Um, They came to repossess his house Mm -hmm. because ultimately the insurance took itself away from the whole equation and the claim was directed at the individual. Okay. And when the claim is directed at the individual, ultimately what happens? Your asset goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not going to have the means to to this, this an unlimited yeah, uh, yeah. pot that you can dip into. This is it. So, you know, it's very important. If someone's watching or listening right now and they're thinking, I pay my insurance every year and never made a claim, but every year I seem to be paying more and more, what would you put that down to? Claims ratios. Um, what does that, that mean? I mean, the cost of living. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just the cost of living. How much is the point of milk now? Mm-hmm. How much was it last year? My dad says to me, you know, why is insurance gone up for? Yeah. What's that got to do with anything? Mm. <laughs> the thing is, what hasn't gone up? Mm. What hasn't gone up? Um, everything's gone up. And then you look at the claims ratio. If you've got, if you've got a certain postcode where they're making, you know, um, um, 9 million, 10 million a month and they're paying back 100 million, mm. there's a loss ratio. So what we mean by that is, uh, so be certain locations where the insurers Search are up. paying out way more than they're actually receiving back premiums. Yeah. And it's not a location. That location. It's not a location. We we have this notion that it's location. Okay. It's not. It's industry based. Right. right. Some industries are 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 are, are hemorrhaging in terms of claims. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more claims being made. Like I'll give you a prime example. In my 22, 23 years, I have never dealt with a theft at work claim. Mm-hmm. Never. In the past six months, I've dealt with four. Okay. Now, is this a direct, ref- a direct, a direct reflection mm. of the cost of living crisis? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. I've never dealt with it. Mm. And the first time it came in, I'm like, mm. Mm. And I, I'm the first time, I'd never dealt with it once, so I don't have to deal with it. Yeah. But I, I, I have to, yeah, we, we dealt with it. But infidelity and, and the uh, theft at work and, you know, these are, the, the world's changing. Yeah. By the minute, yeah. um, and people are getting more and more wiser as to what mm-hmm. kind of claims they can make, and they're making them. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, somebody has to pay for it. Yeah, I mean, you try insuring a Range Rover in current times; <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah, you know, I've had policies cancelled. Yeah, I've had friends who can't insure new Range Rovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, it's just not happening. Yeah. Uh, from two grand, they've gone to nine grand. Mm-hmm. Um, no one's making money at the top. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, it's, yeah, because, it's not that the insurance are taking advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. It's and not, thinking, oh, they can afford a new Range Rover like that. It can pay us yeah, way. Yeah, no, no. It's just it's it's a fact that way more of those cars. You see, stolen. if I just break down an RTA claim for you, you have an incident in your car, right? Um, you may have bought your car for two, three, four thousand pound. You may have paid a thousand pound for your insurance. You have a collision straight away. There's personal injury involved. Mm-hmm. However many passengers in your car. They may only get two and a half thousand pound each, mm. but the legal uh, process to get it to that premium, uh, that that payout, mm-hmm. that's got a charge attached to it as the well. Legal work, yeah. yeah. So times that by how many passengers there are. Yeah. Then you got your vehicle damage. Then you got your vehicle storage. Mm. Then you got your vehicle hire. Yeah. So that one thousand pound that you that's paid, just on one side. Yeah. yeah. So that one thousand pound that you paid, or two thousand pound, or three thousand pound that you paid for your car insurance, has just cost mm. that insurer 70, 80,000 pound. Okay. And when I was doing the fraud work and I yeah. was investigating invoices and higher bills and stuff like mm. that, wow, wow. And you think, how are they making any money? So when people say to me that, oh, insurance companies are, are milking it, they're not. Mm. Because if you looked on the other side of the of the fence, where what they're paying out, is it's ridiculous. Yes. Um, so now the time has come where they're consolidating everything and they've everything's, you know, um, um, increased because someone's got to fill the gap. Yeah. 
And we, I mean, you know, as normal, we, we, we talk about RTA claims. I currently have um, a £6 million pound claim. Mm -hmm. £6 million pound claim? Wow. That's huge. Yes. For a road traffic accident? No, for a, for another incident. Okay, okay. But, I mean, you know, this money's got to come from somewhere. Yes. Yeah. And the premium will not be nowhere close to that. This is it. They've been paying it for several years. This is it. Yeah. This yeah. is it. So it's, you know, you you, you go, and I, I know it's, the, there's no nice way of saying it, and no one's ever going to be happy with insurance premiums, but unfortunately, they're already going up, and they're going to carry on going up. Yeah. They're not, you know, people say now, oh, okay, I won't insure it until it, they come down. They won't. They're not coming down. down. A bit like your mortgage rates. Yeah. They've gone up, then coming down. They're coming yeah. down in time soon. Yeah. yeah. If they do, they might a little bit. A bit. They're not but, going back to where they were. Exactly. Mm. Same with insurance premiums, right? They're not going to go back to what we once enjoyed many years ago. That ain't going to happen. Yeah. So I remember back in the day when I had my RS Turbo a very long time ago, I had a mission trying to insure that. And these days, things are the only worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when you're the... quite young trying to insure a car. Yeah, no, no. It's just, it's just, yeah. it's just. But again, I mean, if you look at the RTAs, yeah. look at what's happening on the streets. Um, you know, uh, RTAs are so common now. Mm. And a lot of that is down to pe the way people are driving, but also it's down to the fact that there's a lot more drivers on the road. There's a lot more cars in every household. You know, all these are contributory factors. Yeah. Yeah, so like, for example, when uh, we've got several cars in our house, when we insure the, the try and insure cars, we've got X cars on the drive that you have, all that impacts your premium. You have, I, does that make a difference? But all these little things make, uh, absolutely, make a difference. Absolutely, absolutely. So is, as property owners, uh, landlords or investors, when we're insuring a property, we can't move its location. We can't change the type of building it is. What things can we do from our side to ensure... Uh, to, uh, uh, ensure that we are getting the best policy we possibly can. Just, just shop around, mm. uh, use competent brokers, um, and just make sure you you know you give the right and make sure you know what your house is all about. Make sure you know your construction. Make sure you know your flat roof, and 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 give the you know give the give give the insurer all the information. And when the paperwork comes, read the paperwork. Yes. I cannot stress that enough. Mm -hmm read the paperwork because the amount of people that don't read the paperwork and it's just in the inbox yeah. and uh, they won't even open the email because we get notifications that it hasn't been opened yet. Yeah. Right? And they'll open it on renewal. Mm -hmm. They'll look, search through the last year's email and they'll open renewal. Yeah. We get a ting yeah. that, that uh, they've, they've checked actually opened email emails look at Right? Um, check your paperwork because it's your asset. Um, and rather than, you know, messing about afterwards and, mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and uh, arguing with the brokers, Check it because you just yes. paid for it. Yes, you do. It makes sense. Correct. Yeah, you paid for something. Yeah, yeah. You're protecting your asset, your business, your house, your property, whatever it may be. Make sure, it's, make sure it's covered properly. Mm. Yeah, because you know, we're human. Brokers are human. Insurers are human. It could be an error on anybody's behalf. Mm -hmm. Check it. Yes. Uh, we met many years ago through networking and stuff, and you were an amazing networker, and you've been a fountain of knowledge when it comes to insurance uh, for me and our. You know, I like to think I'm very knowledgeable on the subject, but actually, you know, always there's something new about having this conversation. And it's such an eye opener in terms of trying to understand how insurance works. And uh, just the fact that by action, you, you need to be completely transparent with the broker about, look, this is what it is, this is what we're doing. So they can try and protect you properly because that's, that's really your role, to try and protect your client. Um, Absolutely. So what what's the best way for people to reach out to you and connect with you if they're looking to connect with you? Social media, um, okay. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. My TikTok's doing yeah. really well at the moment. I was a bit resistant. I was I was resisting TikTok, yeah. but yeah, I've, I've kind of made it. We were talking about earlier the kids taking the Mickey out was being on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? It's actually good. Yeah. It's, uh, there's some great interactions. Abid underscore inspires. Um, Abid underscore inspires. What is that? On uh, on, uh, on uh, Instagram and on TikTok, um, and just follow my videos because yeah. I actually put up a lot of videos about real scenarios that I mm. face daily, um, and people relate to that. Yeah, and not just property, just insurance generally. Generally, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We, you know, we we. we uh, you know, we cover everything. Mm. We cover commercial insurance from from every angle, from from your local tradesman all the way up to your uh, manufacturer, your wholesaler, yeah. your retailer, your property owner, you know, your large portfolios. So we come across all kinds of scenarios and stories, and I like to put them out to people because people can then relate to them. Mm. And we don't use no big jargon because general public doesn't understand that. Yeah. And it's not very fair because they want to engage with people that mm. understand them. Yeah. So a lot of my content is is based on a phone call that I just received, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I kind of twist it in a way where it's relatable. Yeah. 
um, um, and people need to understand it's what they... It's educational, it's inspirational uh, as well. It's very nice. Yeah, and people need to know what they're paying for. People mm -hmm. need to understand. And, and I enjoy clients who, who want to challenge me on insurance because it shows they've taken an interest yeah. in their policy. Um, unfortunately, most don't, but mm -hmm. it'd be good for more people to kind of challenge you and say, well, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does it mean? There's no stupid question. Mm -hmm. There, there is no question that that that's daft, yeah. you know, because it's your asset. You yeah. you know you want to know what you've paid for, and you want to know is your asset protected. Yeah, and if you've got something on the policy you don't understand, you just case feel free to ask us. You know, I mean, um, yeah. challenge us on it, because that's the only way you'll know, and and it'll, it'll make you more wiser. And next time round, it'll make your life easier when you're getting insured. Habit, I really appreciate. Thank no you problem, so Thank you for having you on. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you.